Hey Sopranos fans, welcome to another episode here on Soprano Street, and we are here today to evaluate Tony Soprano's women. Now there are some parameters here. Not only does it have to be someone he had a long relationship with, but also someone he hooked up with at least once, which is why you won't see people like Livia or Dr. Melfi. Although, spoiler alert, they are represented fairly well in other characters. The people, the people we will be evaluating are Irina, Gloria, Svetlana, Valentina, and of course Carmela. Despite Carmela thinking Tony would hump a catcher's mitt, we don't really see that in the show. In fact, Tony seems to do quite well for himself in that regard from both what we can see in the show and the ones we hear about from pre-Sopranos days like Charmaine Bucco and Lorraine Caluso. So if those are catcher's mitts... Put me in, coach. But that is one area that I won't be comparing them, their attractiveness. I'll leave that up to you to discuss in the comments who you think is the hottest and why, although Valentina's body was lit AF. What we will be looking into is what they represent to Tony, such as what he thinks he wants, what he can't have, and different aspects of himself, as well as why they were attracted to him, what they wanted from him, and in comparing them along those lines, we will see who really was the best choice for Tony. Throughout the early part of the series, we see Tony relatively blissfully pursuing what he thinks he wants, and this makes Irina the perfect first girlfriend. Compared to Carmela, who is somewhat independent-minded, even if she's not actually independent, Irina is an almost completely submissive woman, but Tony failed to take into account that with complete submission comes complete dependence. Irina was such a helpless fucker, baby. While Tony may be an odd person to give a sense of security, it's likely that's what she saw in him at first, but it's doubtful all she saw was money by the end. Who sent you, Tony? Yeah, he asked me to bring you this. What is that, money? I don't want it. Unlike almost everyone else in Tony's life, she seems to genuinely love him, and more than that, she seems to want to be the submissive woman that Tony thinks he wants. Even after Tony ruined her relationship with Zelman, and she starts drinking and dialing Carmela, Tony loves me, you know? If it wasn't for his kids, you would be out on the street. She still shows that she loves Tony, but she is wrong. It wasn't about the kids. In reality... Why now? Why now? Oh, it's just not fun anymore, okay? In a somewhat Twilight Zone-ish fashion, Tony got bored very quickly with what he thought he wanted because the reality of it was quite different than expected, which is something that Tony experiences throughout the series, especially in his career pursuits. In stark contrast to Irina's doe-eyed innocence, we have Gloria. Those eyes. Those dark black eyes. Lifeless eyes. Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. When Tony meets Gloria in the waiting room of their mutual psychiatrist, Dr. Melfi, which is not the only thing they have in common, they immediately hit it off. Gloria's level of independence, especially in contrast to Irina, impressed Tony greatly, and during a date at the zoo, Tony said, I never met anybody like you. But that's not true. He has, and her name was Livia. A little bit later, Gloria brought up some subjects in conversation that seemed to ruin the mood. See you later. Who is that? Oh, that was my heart on. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Between the Buddhism and talk about the family. Poor you. And that poor you is the first time Tony made the connection between Gloria and his mother. I don't want to fuck my mother. Let me see. It's really gone. You lie. Gloria didn't just share characteristics with Livia, however, she also shared some with Tony. Like Tony, she seems to view people in terms of what she can get from them. That douchebag buys a new 600 for me every year. This was last year. And they both can be very snake-like in that regard. Interestingly enough, right before they hook up on their zoo date, Tony asks Gloria, No snakes can fuck themselves. Since we're on this scene, I'll take a quick second to point out a fan theory that Gloria was pregnant, and you can say what you think about it in the comment section. The theory, as far as I can tell, is based on three things. First, they were doing it in front of a sign that said nesting. Next, in Tony's dream, she has something in the oven, and then the ceiling caves in. Either way, despite her independence, her instability made any relationship with an also unstable Tony likely to burn out quickly, which it did, and shortly thereafter she killed herself. It was a death Tony took harder than most, likely due to how much of Livia, and possibly himself, that he saw in Gloria. 
From the unstable Gloria, we go to the most mentally fortified one in the group, Svetlana, who represents what Tony can't have and, in that regard, represents Dr. Melfi as well. After a long personal relationship and one indulgence in some afternoon delight, Svetlana ultimately turns Tony down because she knows all the baggage that comes along with him. But why was she attracted to him in the first place? There's a good chance that, like Dr. Melfi, she was attracted to the alpha male aspect of Tony and the fact that she was drinking led her to act on it even though it was never going to be more than a one-time thing. Similarly, if Dr. Melfi, who we know likes to drink, were ever to do so alone with Tony, it might have worked out the same way. She had those nuts in her mouth. Either way, both of them eventually drop Tony and in doing so, they solidify that Tony is unlikely to ever be able to maintain a relationship with a woman of that caliber. During the same period of time, Tony's relationship with Carmela was falling apart and he began to increasingly indulge in his immature side, cannonballing back into his bachelor lifestyle. Tony, I'm having a fucking time. Stay out late. Come home drunk. Fuck anyone I want. Yeah, so what's the difference? I don't know. It's a mindset. While Syl was right, and that is how Tony had acted all along, Tony's response confirms that mentally, he's letting go of his responsibilities. It's during this exceptionally immature period in Tony's life that he meets Valentina, and they quickly hit it off due to their shared childish sense of humor, which is highlighted as being in stark contrast to Carmela. Initially, she seemed to be just after a good time, like Tony, but after some resistance from him, her feelings intensify. This may be due to the fact that, like Tony, she may not know how to handle not getting what she wants. But why did they want each other? It's arguable that Tony's pursuit of Valentina was more about taking something of Ralphie's, as evidenced by the fact that he tried to end it immediately after. It's not gonna happen. Why? Why not? For one thing, I already took his horse. And it's just as likely that part of Valentina's reasoning was equally childish, trying to get back at Ralphie by getting with Tony, who I'm sure she knows Ralphie hates. Either way, both of the things Tony took from Ralphie go up in flames, literally. But Tony's response to Valentina catching fire is likely the same response Valentina would have had if the situations were reversed. You know, I didn't come here to fight. I came here to pick you up and end this like a gentleman. I'm gonna fucking kill myself. I gotta take this. It's doubtful she would have stood by Tony like Carmela did, and Irina probably would have. There's a good chance that, just like Tony, she would have been gone as soon as the good times were. And that brings us to Carmela, who, of all the choices we have here, was definitely the best for Tony. She was independent and feisty enough to keep from getting boring, mentally tough enough to handle him, but submissive enough to turn a blind eye, and most significantly, she was mature enough to be a mother. Tony wanted a traditional family with children who have a mother better than he had, and while Carmela may not be perfect, she is certainly much better than Livia. If it weren't for the fact that Tony wanted the appearance of a traditional family, he really would have been much better off following the Polly Walnuts theory. Stay single as long as you can. Oh, come on, what are you saying? Oh, no offense, but ask me, marriage and I think don't jive. And stuck to hookers and bada bing Crosbys. Thanks for watching this episode here on Soprano Street. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you at the next score.